All right, and I'm back again. <clears throat> yep, still, still very phlegmy. Still got a slight cough. Don't know what it's from. I don't feel sick at all, but it's too early in the year for my fall allergies to be kicking in. But I cannot clear my throat out, so <clears throat> I do apologize for that. Are going to be doing some Dominar United drafting. Uh, real quick, we'll check the store. Weirdly, Magic Arena doesn't seem to have audio right now. Like, at all. I don't know what's up with that. I imagine there'll be a patch relatively soon that'll interrupt my games. But yeah, I switched over. Yeah, just gonna... Yeah, I, switched, I tried unplugging and reattaching the microphone, and now that I've done that, slightly paranoid. Okay, there's the microphone thing still, and we double check it over. Ever since that one video where it just muted my entire stream, I get really paranoid about that. Oh, hey, it's Frexian Obliterator. <clears throat> but yeah, there there is no audio coming through anything, like sound effects, music, nothing. So... I imagine then we're going to get a patch in the near future that is going to interrupt the games because it's like, hey, you, you have to download the update real quick. But in the meantime, <clears throat> let's wander over here to Dominara United. And, yep, yeah, we're going to have to join with gems. Like, I know the game was having some audio issues where the music would just suddenly die on you. And the sound effects will get weird, but it is super weird that it's just muted right now entirely. Uh, real quick. It's not muted. No, everything's set up. Okay. Hey, right, just double checking. <clears throat> oh, there's that one player who just doesn't want to click ready even though they paid their gems and sat down. Yeah, they were going to play some magic, and then all of a sudden... Oh, no, there we go. They made it. Alright. Which one is this again? White kicker, blue kicker. Up to X creatures and or planeswalkers you control, where X is the number of times the spell was kicked. Those permanents phase out, then Firestorm deals 5 damage to each creature and each planeswalker. <clears throat> So you can kick it twice to save two of your dudes, and then it's a five damage, five, uh, five mana sorcery deals five damage to all permanents. Well, yeah, creatures and planeswalkers, so all permanents that can be dealt damage. I haven't played with this yet. I haven't played against it yet. Um, it is a wrath effect, and I think I skipped over this while doing my look at all the cards. Like, I noted the dragon one that deals two damage to everything. I think I actually skipped over this, because I think I thought it did something else. And somehow my brain just kind of a, like bounced right over it without even reading it. I think we're going to take it, though. It's a new rare. We're going to try it. And I'm not seeing anything else in this pack that's like, yes, I will regret trying out the new rare in the new set. And we immediately get Lightning Strike. I do love Niall. Uh, or however you pronounce her name, <clears throat> um, in five-color domain, like, just best card out of the top five cards of your deck every turn is so absurdly powerful. Um, but we already took a potent red card, so I'm very inclined to take one of the best common removal spells in the set. So, yeah, let's take the lightning strike. <clears throat> uh, we have a dragon whelp. Electrostatic Infantry, and a Flowstone Infusion. Uh, we also have two red dual lands, one of which would provide the other color we need to save one of our things if we want to bump this up to a 7-drop to wipe the board. Um, hmm... <clears throat> I think I'm inclined to take the land here. Like, all of these are okay red cards, and none of these other cards are really doing much for me, so this is a fairly easy opportunity for me to pick up 
a red blue duel for this thing and for possible other spells down the line. Alright, so we already have a lightning strike and now temporal and temporal firestorm, like we started with that one. Now we have it, yeah. <clears throat> so Twin Inferno goes up a bit in value. The more lightning strikes you have and the more like decent sized creatures you have. Like, I would not run this if it only copied spells, and I wouldn't run it if it only gave double strike until end of turn. If you have, like, large creatures and a lot of good removal spells, I think Twin Inferno actually gains a lot more value, especially if they're, like, mana-efficient removal spells, like a Lightning Strike or something. <clears throat> uh, the other thing I might want out of this is the Maria's Outrider. Uh, if we take a bunch of dual lands, that thing goes way up in value, even if we stay mostly in red. Um, so this thing does die to uh, Firestorm. In fact, most creatures in this set die to Firestorm. There's like the 4-6 uh, that costs less based on the number of basic lands you control. Um... Is the only red card in the pack, so if we take it, we continue cutting red, and it is playable. We're going to need some, like, decent-sized smaller creatures, though. Um, you know, just to start it, just to get started on reducing the casting cost, because as an 8-drop, this thing's pretty abysmal. Uh, if we had an enlist creature, I might take it here, like in red or green especially. But we don't, so again, I'm inclined to take the cheap kill a small creature spell. Okay, and here's a bunch of red. None of it's great. <laughs> like, I, I don't really want Fire Nato in this deck. Like, I already have some top end blow out a bunch of uh, creatures that this thing would kill anyway. We do have a lot of spells, though, so... Githu Amplifier goes up a bit. We also have one way to splash for it. Now we get a second copy of him. Also, that's two Captain's Calls that went by. I do love an Urborg Uprising, but I think we're going to stick to the red creatures and hope that nobody to our left takes uh, Fire Nato as a signal that red is open. Um, Alright, so I want some efficient creatures for the monstrosity. And I don't think I need two Flowstone Infusions. The other option is to take the Pixie, since I'm already kind of in blue. But I think we can take the Sentry here. And then we have the option for a Rootwalla. White Green Dual Land, Death Bloom Gardener, and Infinite Flowstone Infusions. I kind of just want to take the land. Like, we already have the Sunbathing Root Walla, and I'm in the market for the, um, what's her name? The um, Maria's Outrider already, if we start seeing them. Don't really care about Inscribe Tablet too much, and Toxic Abomination's not going to make our deck. Ah, uh, we opened a rare land, so that's no good. Uh, we have a blue red duel. Um, also, we have our first enlist creature, which is something I definitely want with the monstrosity. Um. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm going to take the. Coalition War Brute over one of the dual lands and hope that one of the dual lands comes back to us out of the three that we had there. Two mana, two, two, cast a creature spell, it gets a counter. When it dies, you can move its counters onto another creature. <clears throat> no multi lands here. It's an efficient threat. Yeah, I'm okay with taking that now. Maybe we'll wheel one of the combat tricks. Uh, we didn't take the Dragon Whelp, so we can't do the fun thing with this guy. He is a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three Menace, but... 
I think I'm going to take the 4-6. It survives our cool removal spell, the uh, Firestorm. And it, um, we do already have two dual lands to help it. Uh, the other card I'd be interested in is Bite Down. So I think I'm okay taking the Sojourner here. There's a black-green duel. There's also a Sprouting Goblin, which if we're going to be base red-green, lets us get any of the dual lands that we have. And I think that's good enough. Um, yeah, it would be either him or the black-green dual land, and I think the Goblin is more worthwhile. And pick up a red-green duel here. Basically for free, we're losing out on Magnagoth Sentry, which we already have a copy of. And like I said, I'm not super interested in Fire Nado. Five mana sorcery speed removal. Um, ooh, Radya and Sacred Peak. Alright, I'm going to spend the pick on Radya. No, I don't know why I keep calling her Radya. Somewhere in my head, she had, like, an eye in here somewhere back when she got her first card in Planar Chaos, and she's just been stuck like that ever since. Uh, we haven't gotten, like, we're not going to get a ton of lightning strikes or anything, but we kind of need one or two more before I want another Twinferno. Like, I don't think there was anything great in the pack that we took Twinferno, but... Yeah, we have not seen any other, like, really good removal spells. <sighs> we could copy Thrill. But I don't think I want that. Just take the Gardener here. Alright. Right now... Yeah, technically all of our dual lands make one of our other, like, either red or green. So, I'm feeling okay about that. This will be the first one that doesn't do that. Uh, we only have Rada in our legendary slot. I think I'm okay taking, like, one dual land that basically gives us domain if we're already like anywhere near that and now that we have a bunch of domain cards I'm kind of okay with the scout the wilderness it does have to get a basic land specifically unlike the some of the other ones that can get a card with a basic land type uh, we only have the one enlist creature right now so the axe goes down a bit in value we also don't have a lot of like early Aggro creatures. I'll take another flow stone over the thing. We'll take the fire nato just because. And that one's fine for the sideboard. Although it's best of one, so sideboarding way less impressive. Alright, so we have one black duel that we can use to cast this, and the Death Bloom Gardener so far. Um, we can take another red-green dual land to ease our mana in case we need to run, like, a basic of other types. But I think I want Terra Sunder. Like, we get the black mana going, and it's a much more potent removal spell. Alright. So that fixes for both of our, like, splash kicker colors, or we can take Rulik. I feel like we're a little bit heavier red than green, necessarily, so the Rulik goes down a bit. Also, wouldn't mind a Sojourner. But yeah, I want to be able to pay the kicker costs on our two things. We might drop the beachfront. Oh, free lightning strike. Also, Territorial Marrow. Uh, this guy could very easily be a 5-mana 10-10. And a lot of the lands are getting snapped up. Mm. At the same time, though, 
Lightning Strike is one of the best removal spells in this set. There's another Red White Duel. Uh, we can take that. We could also take the Root Walla. Red White is just helping us for our, um, whatchamacallits, right? Our domain cards. Alright. Take that. Uh, if one of these were a Red Black Duel, I'd be a lot happier. Um, we don't have the Blue Green Duel yet. We could also take the Steel Crusher. All right, I'm going to take the Tributary. We have two of the <clears throat> um, Blue Green, or not, the, the Gifu amplifiers. Um, don't particularly like any of these for our deck, so it might be the Crystal Grotto to fix for the Black Splash. A Sprouting Goblin, Beast Caller, Sunbather. I'm debating if I want, like, another two-drop or if I want another, like, mid-sized creature. I think the answer is mid-sized creature. Yeah, none of the lands are coming back. Alright. Yeah, our two-drop slot seems relatively stacked. At the same time, I don't know how many Flowstone... Kavus I'm actually going to run, like, I already have two of them. Uh, maybe take a combat trick then. That might be... Well, we can take that, or we can grab another dual land to ease our mana requirements, maybe let us run another, like, just run a basic swamp. So that way we can tutor for it with, like, Scout the Wilderness and whatnot. Like, if we have enough red-green duels, then we can afford to have a basic swamp in the mana base. Yeah, I think Idyllic Beachfront is going to go away. And we'll run Contaminated Aquifier as our... Oh, we just accidentally hit Domain off of one land off the top of our deck. Type of card. The only downside is we have, like, one more excuse for white mana than we do black. Um... There we go. There's the sweet spot for the sideboard. Trying to put the card in there. Yeah, none of these look like they're going to make it in. Eight, nine. I don't know. We have all these lands, so we it might not actually need cuts. Hang on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we actually need like two more spells in the deck. That's not great. Um, especially not if those are the spells we're gonna get towards the end. All right, come here, Mister Enlist, destroy artifacts, dude. Yeah, we have 33 cards in our deck, but we have 9 non-basics over here. We're going to cut it down to 8, but that's still... So we have, room, we have like, one cut to make, maybe? Ah, I hate that card. That, that one's very low on my list of creatures in this set. I think it might be my least favorite creature, the 1-1 one, one elf that gets plus one power for creature fall. Yeah. Just incredibly underwhelming. Yeah, we have 41 cards. We have one cut to make, and then we could add in any of these. And by any of these, I mean, like, well, which one of these are we even going to seriously consider in the main deck? Um, it might just be the Colossal Growth, although it is pretty easy to give the creature Trample. Might be Twin Inferno. we might not have gotten there on here. Let's do, let's see what we actually have for copyable instants and sorcery. So T colon creature. Oh, 
Not the number four. It's not helping anything. Alright, so things we can copy. Infusion, two lightning strikes, uh, colossal growth, uh, Terra Sunder. So... I don't know that we have quite enough. We do have a five power trampler, though, and... Rada gives plus X, plus X, which is a huge bonus. Uh, he has Trample and can dramatically increase his... Not dramatically, but, you know, if he grabs, like, four power off of that guy or taps Rada to gain a huge power boost. Uh, this thing can jump up to a 6-6. Six, six. This guy grows. This one has an list. I'm talking myself back into the Twinferno. So the question then becomes, like, I feel like I want one Swamp in this deck uh, to help the mana bases. Like, we have two black mana sources, and we can tutor for uh, one of the black mana sources with the Sprouting Goblin. Uh, we can also uh, tap to add black that way, just for the kicker cost on this. But if we have another swamp, like, that gives us one more black mana source we can draw, and if this stays in, it's another thing we can go grab. Um. Prefoke Coalition War Brute. Molten Monstrosity. What is our last card? Like, which one of these cards is not actually pulling its weight as much as I want it to? Maybe the Infusion? The Infusion kills a lot of, like, early threats and problematic creatures. You know, if we kill, like, a Sunbathing Root Wallow before they can pump it, or, um, you know, like, one of the cheaper Enlist creatures that can suddenly gain a lot of power, or one of the Knights, like the white one or the black one, that have First Strike and Pump Power. It's very efficient for that. We do have two lightning strikes, though, as far as efficient removal goes. I guess we can cut that. So, let's see. We have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and six, seven, eight, nine. Hmm. Go down one swamp and come back up here and go lands and pull up one. Yeah, cut the one forest for one swamp. Just so we have one more tutorable black mana source. Just that uh, our black mana sources that tutor have one more option. Yeah, okay, we'll add the swamp in. Alright, let's give it a shot. See how we do. Uh, it's the opposite of what I'm used to. Like, normally, you add in, like, a hybrid card or something. It's like, your your deck is technically three colors. It's like, in, in what way, Magic Arena? But now it's like, your deck is two colors. It's like, I'm running, like, all five colors. <laughs> it's like, no, your deck is only two color. Alright, so... We don't have a green mana source in our opening hand. We have the Goblin. We have our Wrath. We have the War Brute. Hey, right. Notably, we didn't draw the Swamp, so it's not like we would have a green mana source if only I had not made that particular change. Um... Hmm... I'm going to run out the Sacred Peaks because I really want to top deck the forest and kick the Sprouting Goblin. But that means I can't Lightning Strike end of turn here to kill that, and I probably need to. That thing is way, way too much this fast. Um, unfortunately, we did not draw our fourth land at all, so we might have to run the Unkicked Goblin out. Uh, just as a blocker for everything our opponent can do. Okay, now they can sack their guy. So they can sack a creature to put a 1-1 counter on each creature they control. Uh, we still haven't found our other color. We are one mana off of the temporal uh, firestorm, though. 
So I'm going to put this down more to soak damage, like to stop the 2-1 from just rumbling. Okay, or to bait out one of their removal spells. Yeah, we're so low on life that we might have to... Well, now we drew the forest specifically, so... Yeah, we can put down two one ones to prevent damage and ramp ourselves a bit, so I'm okay with that. Um, so we already have a black mana source. I think I just want another forest then. All right, blight pile is another creature that we get to kill. All right, so now we get to blow them out. So we'll double block here because that soaks more damage. And yeah, now we just get to Temporal Firestorm their entire board away. Alright. So, let's see... We have one, two, three, four, five, six. So two, three, four, five does not let us hold up lightning strike. And I kind of really want to be able to hold up lightning strike here. For Garna. Draw a card if it was attacking, otherwise it deals one damage to each opponent. Yep. Alright, and play out the land. And pass turn. Yeah, we'll just go for the bolt on Garna here. She's other creatures, so they won't get the effect on her. Oh, do they have... Okay, they're gonna kill our guy. That's fine. They do get to recast their skeleton, unfortunately. And now we don't have what would have been a 3-3 to deal with that, and we're very low on life. Activate him, we will get I guess we'll get the aquifier here and he is sacrifice a land draw card. Yeah, we're probably gonna go to four here because we're a little bit flooded now. Oh cool. The big scary flyer. Um Yeah, blocking the skeleton here doesn't do much for us. And now we have to sacrifice a land in order to do anything, basically. Because we're just dead to the flyer, more or less. Oh, we drew more land. Okay, they got it. Yeah, we were able to stabilize pretty hard, and then they just kept drawing creatures every turn. Like, we got a 4 for 1 there on their thing, and... They just kept playing creatures every turn after that. Like, if they had drawn land the way we drew land, we could have very easily won that game. So, I think we did an okay job. Maybe I should have just mulligan the hand in the first place since I didn't have the green mana, but... We have more green than anything else right now, I think. Or do we have more red, technically? We might have more red. I think I took out one of the basic forests, and we had way more forests... Then we did mountains. But we also didn't draw that swamp, so it's not like that was what happened. Like, if we had drawn that one swamp and we needed a forest, we know exactly what we would have had instead. Uh, opponent goes first. We get to go three drop into infinite four drops with one land off the top. Uh, so yeah, if opponent goes like early aggro creatures, and then kills all of our big dudes, then we're going to have a problem, but other than that, I think we're good. Ah, cool, we even have a 2-drop now. Although that might mess up us, us casting our 3-drop or our 4-drop if we go for it, but we'll see what they do here. Okay, if they're not putting out anything, then we'll just go for... Okay, so they get a land, and they're going to take the one that fixes all their colors. Ah, oh, cool. So we get to do the 2-drop and the 3-drop now. And then... Or we can skip the 3-drop to do a 4. One or the other. We'll have to figure out which one we want to do. Or 
Or we'll just draw more untapped lands and be able to curve out perfectly and then worry about this wooded ridge line later on. Alright, they scribed to the top. At least I believe they did. I was kind of focused on my own thing and I saw it out of the corner of my eye. It's like, I believe they put it on top so they liked what they saw. They got a 1-1. One, one. Oh, cool. We get to curve out perfectly then. Alright, since I can't use it to enlist anyway, we're going to attack for two first. If they, like, infusion my guy or something, I'm okay with that. And, yep, we'll follow it up with the Kavu. And we'll continue to put pressure on the opponent who started off a little bit slow to fix their mana. We'll see what they play, though. They're on four mana now. And their base... Green looks like. Ah, uh, they're gonna cast a blue spell. Ah, <laughs> cast a blue spell, pay a blue kicker cost. Same difference. Okay, so he's currently a 6-drop. I kind of want to just jam for 2 and then play Rada, because then we can use Rada's ability to buff the Steel Crusher so it can attack comfortably. And to get the Enlist value for the Worm next turn, or the Helion, rather. So yeah, I think we just hit for 2 and play Rada. Our opponent has a ton of cards in their hand, and we haven't given them a good enough threat, I guess. Like, 2-3 Menace is a minor problem for them, but they could very easily just kill Rada here. Oh, nope. They're going to keep developing out their board, so I like that. <clears throat> going to poke me for one? No? Yes? Okay. So, she's plus three, plus three right now. So... Three, four, five. So that knocks Molten Monstrosity down from seven. So it knocks him down another three, so he'd be two mana, which leaves us with mana to pump once, but not twice. So, uh, yeah, let's make the monkey huge. And, yep, yeah, go to blockers, see what they want to do. They can lose half their life to trade with the Kavu for their 3-2 flyer. Um, we can also just double pump and kill both their creatures. Uh, as much as I would like to get the other thing down, I'm really hard-pressed not to grab this two-for-one real quick and cut their life total in half. So that way they don't have blockers next turn from our gorilla unless they have a removal spell, like, their next turn. Yeah, it's a little bit awkward that we don't get to deploy another creature this turn. So they only need to put up a block, but they only, like, we can attack with both now and pump up the gorilla. If they don't have another creature, if they do have another creature, we're attacking with an 8-5 again, just by its own ability. So they haven't played a removal spell yet, but they also have five cards in their hand, so maybe... The downside is we won't get the massive discount on the Molten Monstrosity next turn if they kill the Steelbreaker in combat or with a trick, so... Gonna turn one of their lands into a different land again. Now it's a Swamp, so... Oh, are they going to extinguish the light then? That uh, feels like the most likely thing. Ah, oh, it's just Braids! Hey Braids, how's it going? They sack that... 
Uh, if you decline, you lose two life, and opponent draws a card. I think we have to decline here. So... Ooh! Oh, that might kill them. Um... Depending on how they block here. So... Yeah, they're tapped out. So we're gonna go to attackers. We're going to enlist again. Tap Rada. Get up to an 8-5. And see how they want to block. So they're dealing 7 damage and... Hang on. Uh, view Battlefield. So that's 9 toughness and 7 damage. So we can just save it with that or we can just... Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so we're going to do that, and we will kick it, and deal maximum damage to them, and keep our guy alive, and play this one mana 5-5 five, five Trampler. Yep, there we go. <clears throat> yeah, I wasn't sure if we were going to have enough to keep the... Um, Gorilla alive. I'm forgetting how much toughness he actually has there. Like, he doesn't need much to survive. So, just the regular pump would have been enough, and the kicker giving it an extra pump and trample. Alright. One and one. Yeah, our opponent didn't have any interaction. They just kept tapping out for creatures every turn. I was expecting some amount of interaction with them having all the colors to work with. Uh, we have plenty of mana, and we get to go 2-drop, 3-drop. Yeah, okay. We don't have any blue yet to kick this, and the Twin Inferno with this guy is not particularly amazing, but... All right, let's slam the Beast Caller. Oh, do they have Rona's Vortex? It's giving them priority in that... There's Rona's Vortex, and there's the uh, minus one power and draw card. Well, that makes me even more convinced it's the Vortex now. Um, I guess we lean on damage. I'm just concerned that it might be uh, Essence Scatter, but I don't think we want our 3-drop countered when it fixes, like, it lets us cast our 4-drop if we don't draw a land, and it fixes for this thing. Yeah, it is Essence Scatter. Okay. So, we get our 3-3. Three, three. If we don't draw a land next turn, we play out the 1-1 one, one Death Touch to fix our mana. Alright. And that is where we are at right now, so we cast her, we get an extra counter on that thing, we get to attack for four. It's very possible, though, that they have Rona's Vortex and that they're not going to kill the 4-4, four four. they're going to, like, put it on the bottom of my deck, or at least bounce it back to my hand, so I won't get any of these counters redistributed, and that's a little bit sad, but... Alright, so I have a 1-1 one -one they can give Death Touch to... Um, yeah, we need, like, actually, we only need one more mana to cast that, unfortunately, but yeah, we can't actually protect our 4-4, four -four. but we will get to redistribute the counters, uh, and we get to hit them for 7 trample. Alright, I'm gonna hold off a turn. Like, it was an option, <clears throat> but we can just make our guy even bigger. And they really do need it to be like Rona's Vortex or something if they're going to <clears throat> stop what's happening to them right now. But yeah, if I wait a turn, I might be able to get a bounce in. Yep, there's Rona's Vortex. Felt pretty obvious that's what they had, although they tapped out of black. So, Auto Tapper kind of ruined them there. Alright. Um, or they have more uh, single blue casting cost spells, so they might have had both, or another Rona's Vortex. 
But I feel like they're taking four damage here. Um, so, eight, sixteen? Or, I'm sorry, seven, fourteen? Um, alright. Let's go for it. Uh, oh no. Oh no, wait, we need double strike, not the... Yeah. Uh, target creature gains double strike. Ah, they do that. Oh no, yep, we got him. Okay. They might have had the minus one power, in which case they would have lived. Because we would have only dealt them 12 there. Yeah, they were passing priority pretty quickly. I didn't think they had Rona's Vortex again with that. But it did feel like they had something, so it probably was the minus one power. Which would have been enough to not die there. But they would have gone to one. So... I guess they didn't want to continue at that point. Alright, so we have a red, and we have a green, and we have our goblin, and we have a root wall if we don't top deck the land in time. So we can go like root wall, uh, and maybe a lightning strike or something in the meantime. But yeah, um... I'm willing to keep... Oh good, we got the land, so now we get to do everything. And opponent also has a good creature. So let's kick the sprouting goblin. Uh we can't get black and white at the same time. So I'm kind of inclined to get like black red. We already have the blue for the kicker on the one creature. So to get more colors, we can get red white or white green we already have double green so i'm inclined to get a red and i think the removal spell is better than our other options so and yeah we can't attack into that yet <clears throat> well if they're going to kill a thing probably the root walla ah Alright, so they're going to spend the whole turn equipping their guy and attacking for four, and then we get to lightning strike it down. Ah, nope. Hmm. No equip and no, um... Whatchamacallit. Um... Alright, so if we don't play this, we can't, um... Lightning strike and Twinferno it. So, downside is we can't pump now, <clears throat> but I'm inclined to wait the turn, see if we can get two creatures for two spells. We'll also have the pump activation on the root walla, and we're holding up the lightning strike in case they do something cool here. <clears throat> and they might just kill our creature, like... They might be holding Lightning Strike also. Which seems really weird that they let me take my turn. They're mousing over literally everything and it is Lightning Strike. Um, yeah, that happens. That's fine. If they go for the equip... Okay. They're just going to attack me for two here. That's fine. I was going to say, if they go for the equip, I think I lightning strike their guy to avoid taking four damage, but... And there we go. We get to double lightning strike down their board, and that seems pretty good here. Right, so we have to cast this first. Uh, when you cast your next instant or sorcery spell this turn, copy it. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and do that. 
go ahead and lightning strike that. And let's lightning strike this. And now they have two cards in their hand. And an axe. And we have three creatures in our hand. Including some very tempo-based creatures that we get to do things with. So, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So we go red, blue, and we're going to kick her. And we will bounce that back to their hand. Get in for two. Play land and pass. Yeah, they can replay Garna. And... Yeah, we'll kick that again. Send that back to their hand. Uh, attack with both of those. And play out a land. We can sack the lands to him to draw cards, so... Oh, hey, it's Garna again. What are the odds? Um... So yeah, let's slam the monstrosity here. Uh, play a land, and we're going to start feeding our lands to our goblin to draw cards. Try and find, like, one of our other combat tricks. We can only phase out one of our creatures, so if we do top deck the wrath effect, we can only save the 5-5 five five here. Assuming that it doesn't just eat a removal spell, so that our opponent isn't basically dying on board right now. But yeah, we got to deploy our threats and stall them out. So they drew a bunch of cards, but they couldn't do anything with them for a while. Uh, that is fine. And yeah, they're choosing not to attack. Um, we will activate him and we'll sacrifice one of these forests. And go looking for more action. Hmm. Okay, that's fine. Oh, wow, is that fine? Um, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11? They almost die? They almost die here. Um, yeah, it doesn't change anything, and we would have to lightning strike Garna down anyway, so. Let's go ahead and do that. And bash with everybody. And yeah, now they're at two, so they need to find something here. Alright, seems good. And we're done. Uh, we're almost out of gold rank again. It has been too long since I've been in Mythic, but I haven't been playing anywhere near enough to reasonably get back into that and now even when I'm streaming half of the time I'm doing it to build commander decks so if I streamed a lot more if I this were my job I could probably do mythic relatively easily not easily easily but um so we have the amplifier as like our early play and then we're we have three colors towards this guy, so he's down to a five drop, and hey, we're going to need to draw at least one more land. We're going to play this out as a two, uh, just to hold the ground. Ah, never mind, we're going to play that out as a two, and then follow it up with a different creature, and hopefully we draw one of our, like, uh, multi-lands to reduce the casting costs, like black-red would be pretty cool. Okay, that's fine. Premium creature, premium removal. Well, we drew our one of Swamp. So, now we get to play that and make the casting cost on our Sojourner a little easier. So we get to drop that thing next turn. So in the meantime, I will run out the 1-2. We don't have... Oh, we do have the blue, but... 
I'm okay with getting in a few points of damage here and there. And wow, if this thing eats a removal spell, would I be thrilled, so... Alright. It didn't. They played that guy instead. So, now we get to run out a 4-drop, four 4-power four creature. Yeah, I actually think the Magnagoth has more value than the 6-toughness on the other creature. So... Like, they have a 1-1 one, one death touch, effectively, anyway, as long as they can hold up black, so it's always going to be able to kill our thing, so I'd rather it kill... And the 4-6 and the 4-4 four, four are very similar. Oh, there's my Rada. So, that's... <sighs> have Rada. They have black mana, so they can easily pay to trade with our guy. So let's make them trade for something that deals a bunch of damage instead. And in the meantime, we're holding the ground very comfortably, like the Steel Breaker is not going to get through without a combat trick back up or a removal spell, so... Ah. I do like the Steel Breaker when we have a Rada in our hand, but I think we need to get the Reach Creature down soon. Um, we could trade the 5-5 five five Trampler for the 1-1 one one first. Do I even want to trade the... I might not want to trade the Trampler with the Rada in our hand. Alright, so we run out of Reach Creature... And that'll force them to come up with a removal spell for that, so the Dragon Whelp can get through. And it gives us a turn to draw land for the... to play Rada and the Steel Breaker in the same turn, or Steel Crusher. Yeah, the biggest problem right now is we can't enlist... Uh, anytime soon, unless we get another land into play untapped. Okay. If you want to pump pre-combat, like, I'm going to block with the 4-4. Four -four. That, that, that was already a thing. Oh, they're doing it so they can cast their guy cheaply. Okay, that's fair. And, yeah, we'll trade our 4-4 four -four reach for their 4-3 flying dragon. I guess scry... Well, that's another cheap monstrosity that we get to cast, and we can run out the Steel Breaker. Um, they also don't have, like, their good block anymore. So we're going to jam with our 5-5 five five and see if they want to trade 5-5s. Five fives. He'll go back up to a 5- or a 4-casting cost creature, but we can still play the Steel Breaker. Oh no, we can't. Why did I think I had more mana than that? Yeah, we'll see if I get to deal 5 damage to him or not. If we trade with the 5-5, five five, that's still fine, but yeah, I missed that. I, I was, was thinking that I could cast both of these, even if it went up a mana, but no, I needed 6 mana, and that's what I would be on to cast both. Alright, so they are going to trade... Yeah, we'll just run the other one out then. Like, their biggest reason not to trade is that the Steel Breaker can attack as a 7-2 at that point, and I don't have great blocks, like I'm trading, like, one of my 4 or 5 power creatures for their 3-drop 2-2. Two -two. Alright, well, they just cycled through two cards and built up their board, so that was pretty good for them. Uh, Alright, so run out Steel Crusher, and we'll run out Rada. And pass the turn back. <clears throat> and yeah, now we can enlist Rada and pump up the monstrosity. I think we have... No, we're white mana short of full domain. Hmm. 
the barbarian's a little annoying. Alright, so we have lightning strike, so that's actually going to do a lot of work. So we can tap the Rada to make this a 5-2, and then it just trades with, like, their 2-1 or something. And we get to attack with this as a 9-9 Trampler. Alright. I'm down. That sounds good. So we attack, and then we enlist. Uh, tap Rada. Rada's gonna buff this thing all super high. And we will go to their blocks and see what they do. Yeah, they can just put the Death Toucher on the 9-9 Trampler, put one of their 2-2s on my guy. <clears throat> uh, we'll make them spend the mana first. Yep. Okay. And we'll kill that so they lose half their life total. And then we lose our guy to one of their two twos, and they get another scry. I missed if the first one went on top or not. Okay, so they have another five five. <clears throat> and we did not draw away to protect Rada or to get her through again. Um, we're relatively stable. The big problem is that they can make a 7-2 with their Steel Breaker, but then that taps their 5-5, or make a 6-3. Um, so what do their blocks look like? Uh, if this thing becomes a 9-9 again, they have to put at least one Toughness on that. Um, she's a 3-3, so they can eat her with one of the things and this is a 4-6 so that reduces what they can block with so let's see they can eat the Rada pretty easily um, they can put like three guys on that thing and then so if they put their three guys on that thing, that leaves them four damage, so they would take five from the Molten Monstrosity. I think I'm okay with that. Uh, let's push a bunch of damage through this turn. So we go attack, attack, and attack. Uh, use the Rada to buff him up. Yeah, if they go for the easy eat on the Rada... Okay, so they're going to trade the 2-1 then for the Rada here. With its minus one, minus one effect. <clears throat> uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And they're losing, if they do this, they lose all of their creatures except for the Steel Breaker and the Berserker. Ah, they're putting everything on him, okay. So let's see, we're definitely losing Rada to that. They're taking four, going to five. Um, so we want to kill as many of their... So we need to kill this one, so that's five, six, seven... Yeah, we can't really kill the Barbarian. Uh, we do want to make sure we kill the Vivisector, though. Yeah, they had to play around us having a combat trick in our hand, so they get to take four damage here. Yeah, they get a lot of scries. They finish off the Rada. Uh, one to the bottom. One to the top, so they're going to leave that one on top, whatever it is. All right, and pass the turn. I imagine it's something that kills our 4-6, but I don't know that it is.
Alright. So they left that thing back to block. If it's like the plus three, plus O in first strike, they can trade with our four six because of the way the Berserker works. But whatever it is, I think I have to force it out of their hand. They left it on top, so it's got to do something here. It might just kill the thing out. Okay, so they're just going to kill my guy outright. That's fine. Run out the 2-3 and pass the turn. 2-3 has menace, so they can't just attack us constantly. Unless they draw another extinguish off the top, then they can do whatever. Um... Seems legit to me. Oh, and he was low casting cost, so they're able to gain life, too. Alright. And now we top deck a bunch of lands, and we lose the game. I'll play a forest, and pass the turn. We do have a little while before we just straight up lose, but yeah, we need to draw something soon. And... And we continue to brick. Uh, I don't know if they bricked, but we certainly can't attack right now. Yeah, this is unfortunate. They were going to get a lot of scries, so they were going to get a lot of looks, and we can still draw something, but our window is just closing, and we just keep drawing lands. That is abysmal. Unless they have also drawn lands after that second extinguish, and even if they have... Alright, well, that's not nothing. Um... They're on 8, so I don't think this is helping us to cast it now. I might chump block the 2-2, two -two, though. I want them to play one more spell. If I can get them to commit one more creature now that our life total is low. Yeah, there we go. Okay. That feels a lot better. So, I'm going to play the land. Uh, we need to leave up red in 2 for this. Which we should be able to do. So we go red, red, one, two, three, and white, and one. Yep, okay. So we cast this um, with the kicker. Um, yeah. Uh, we phase this out so it doesn't die. They deal damage to us with their thing, and then we slam the Kavu. Alright. Yeah, we were badly losing that game before. Um, so if we attack them for three... We have to activate them at least once. We have to make this a two-turn clock. Um... Yeah, okay. We'll activate them twice. That way we don't necessarily have to activate next turn, depending on what they have, and it's on them to act. Yeah, we bricked so hard for so many turns. If we did not have that huge life buffer, we would have lost that game very easily. They barely needed anything to win that game, and we gave them so much time. If they had drawn one more spell before we got to that five damage thing, like, they needed to draw it um, two turns before we did, so that way they could attack with that other creature, they might have been able to get us. Or just enlist the Barbarian at that point. Um, so yeah, we got to our four wins, so... If you haven't watched my videos before, I do consider that the bare minimum of success. If I get to four wins, being down 100 gems to get all of the cards I drafted and all the packs I get to open is perfectly fine by me. Like, as far as, like, the bare minimum, like, I did well enough. All right, we go first. We have red-green and another green land. We have a lightning strike. We have our catch-up spell. Uh, we do need to draw a third land for this goblin, but as long as we do that in the next two draw steps, I think everything's going to be great. Uh, so yeah, we'll run out the red-green duel first, and then the green-white duel, I was going to say almost regardless. So, this could have been a forest, 
But we have double green already, so I think that's okay. They have their root walla, and we are going to play our goblin with kicker. And that lets us get our red blue duel, I guess, since we have the um, amplifier in our hand. Yeah, let's go ahead and get one of those. Also, we will have all five colors now when we start casting things, so that's pretty neat. Okay. Uh, do we get anything by playing out one of the untapped lands? And the answer is no. So let's get domain, like full domain here. Um, we can attack for two. Actually, yeah, we can attack for two. If they want to trade the root wall off for our two two, which yeah, I didn't expect that. I'd be fine with that. If they go for, like, you know, here's my root wall and here's the pump, I'll probably just deal three damage to it. Like, if they want to spend their whole turn doing this, I am more than okay with killing their root wall here. If that's the best thing that they had to do this turn. And, of course, we immediately draw that thing. Um, can we do it? One, two, three, four, five. So we can't do the Molten Monstrosity. So we'll just play out the land, attack for two. Yeah, I'm not in the market for bouncing their guy and giving them another land, but... If they want to cast a giant Doomsday creature... Uh, now we get to get... We get to bounce it for a turn and get in another two damage, so... That's super helpful. And we get to get towards um, Twinfernoing this now so that we can actually kill the 6-6 six, six. Uh, along with any of the counters that they happen to have put on it. So, yeah, we'll kick the amplifier. Bounce that back. And attack for two. And pass the turn. So they recast him. And immediately passes turn. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, technically, I can attack into the Defiler with the uh, Amplifier and deal them a damage, because if they block it, we can uh, give it double strike and plus. 2 power, making it 3 power and killing the thing in combat. I don't know that I want to do that. Um, they can only... They can't have the thing that protects it, though, so... I guess we're going to do that regardless and see what happens. Like, technically, they should just block with their O2. Uh, so they're going to take the damage here... So if we're going to Firestorm anyway to kill the Defiler, and I don't necessarily know that we are yet. Alright, so we'll just deal them the damage here. We'll play out the Deathbloom Gardener so that we can trade with the uh, Defiler with that. Technically, we can go for the Twin Inferno play and give it Double Strike, but that means that we're dead to it if we don't kill it there. Alright. So, they play that. They get to put a counter on each of their dudes. Now they have a 2-2. Two -two. They didn't pay life, though. Hmm. Alright. So, yeah, now we get to wipe their board entirely. If they attack us for 8, we chunk. Okay, so they're not going to do that. Alright, so we can still attack with the 1-1 Death Touch. Technically, we can attack with everything. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and do that, since we're going to Wrath the board anyway. If we had drawn an untapped land, we wouldn't want to attack with the Death Toucher. And they're going to take two damage. Okay, so that works for us. Uh, we have to play the Twinferno first. 
Uh, next instant of sorcery is copied. And yeah, let's obliterate everything. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So yeah, we just have to cast that mode. So we copy it. Yep, and everything's dead. Woohoo! And they have a 2 1 flyer. Good for them. And a 4 4. Okay, the 4 4 is a minor problem. Uh, since we can't cast the Molten Monstrosity, we do a tap land, but that's okay. We get to slam him next turn. Um, he doesn't have reach. I might supposed to kill the 2 1 here. Just because of that. Like, we're going to take. It makes us take two less damage this turn, and it stops us from taking two a turn in the air for the rest of the game. Uh, it makes our clock more threatening for them, depending on what this is. Okay, they have a 2-2. Two, two. So now they can attack and enlist the 4-4, four, four, and that's a problem. Uh, it's okay, though. We played our cool Wrath, so... And we were always going to have to double up on the Wrath anyway. Uh, they didn't give Menace, so yeah, they're going to enlist their 4-4. Four, four. The problem is then we need to draw something, but we need to draw something anyway. We've used one lightning strike. We've used both lightning strikes. Okay, so we're not going to top deck like a cheap removal spell for this guy then. Most likely. I think we have the one immolation still. Alright, so yeah, we'll cast out this one. Technically that trades for any one of their decent sized creatures. If they didn't draw a combat trick, so yeah, if they jam with everybody, uh, we just get to block here and double pump. And trade our 2-3 for their 4-4. Four, four. And take 3. Oh, that's a lot of little dudes. Alright. Yeah, if they only attack with the Badger, I might trade, but if they jam with everything... <sighs> yep! Well, that's the worst case scenario for us, especially since they can activate this turn and deal us 8, 9, 10, if we block one of the little ones. Yeah, we're just dead now. We already used our Wrath effect, so... Activate. Activate. Yeah, that that was a pretty bad sequence of top decks for us from the opponent. So we're very super dead now. Yep, that'll do it. Good game, opponent. You got us. Yeah, that was... That was very unfortunate, the sequence of top decks they had after we killed their giant bomb. The problem is, I think if we don't play the 1-1 Death Touch, we just take so much trample damage from their, um, whatever, the green one of the cycle, with all the counters. I think we just take so much trample damage from that thing the turn before we play the Wrath that we just die anyway. All right, well, that was our last loss that we could afford to give if we want to get our seven wins. <clears throat> yeah, as much as I say that four wins is my minimum, I would always like to get all seven of them, and, you know, everyone beyond the fourth win just makes it a net positive at that point for the draft, so... Would like to continue getting wins, but yeah, if we wind up 4-3. and three. All right, I'm inclined to keep this again. We have the goblin, we have our red mana, our green mana, so... Um... Yeah, we're not... We don't have to play the Githu now. Githu on turn two, so... 
Uh, we will hold on to the Sacred Peaks for right now, play out the forest, and we'll run out the Goblin Kicked. There he is. And... We already have a black mana source. We have the red-black already, so... I guess we get a blue source here. Alright, what's your three-drop opponent? A 2-2 two -two and a 1-1. One -one. Um... Hmm... I mean, we can block the 2-2, two -two, but I'm probably not going to, so I'm going to jam for 2 here. If they want to trade their 2-2 two -two for my 2-2 two -two and have up a 1-1, one -one, that's fine with me. Uh, we're also not going to have great blocks with the 2-3 that I'm about to cast while I play out my lands. So, but yeah, I'm not going to bother pumping our goblin to deal them a few extra damage. Alright, so they did accept the trade, we'll play out the land, and we'll drop a 2-3 in the way of their 1-1. One -one. That's going to be difficult to block, so they'll need another creature now. That's the other thing, by getting rid of the 2-2, two -two, they don't get to double block the Kavu. And trade 1-for-1 one -one with it, effectively. All right, so we get to... So we have a couple options here. Um, we can play the land... We can play this land and kick this one, and then we can bounce either of their creatures. I'm inclined to bounce the token at that point to actually deny them another creature to block with. Uh, we can also run out this one to start getting counters on it. Uh, but then we don't have a good attack. All right. I think we're going to kick the Githu and bounce their token here. And get in for two damage. This does let us cast uh, Beast Caller next turn and kick this still in mid-combat and play the Sacred Peak so that way we untap into being able to cast the Monstrosity. So that looks like what our cycle of... like what our next turn cycle looks like. Alright, do they bother attacking for three? They do. Okay. They have another creature then? They don't. Um... Okay, so now we get to cast the Beast Walker and the Kavu this turn. Uh, so we're just going to attack for two with the Kavu, since they can't block unless they have the 1-1 uh, one -one Flash creature. And if they had that, I'd be okay with them blocking. So we cast this. And we cast a second Kavu. That gets a counter. And we play our land. And now we have access to the monstrosity next turn as a 5 drop. So that doesn't, unless we draw an untap land that doesn't give us the colossal growth cast, it does give us one activation on the Kavu, on one of them without losing. The ability to cast the molten monstrosity. Hmm. We are taking a bit of damage from that flyer, unfortunately, but... Alright, so they still can't block the Kavu without having to throw the Elias on it also. So... Let's jam with both of these, then. And then start playing Monstrosities. Uh, 
I mean, is debating if they want to throw their Elias away to stop these two threes that are attacking them. They do risk taking a lot of damage this turn. Alright. Because technically I can pump both of them up to four and they could take eight here. But... We will just activate one of them once. So they take five. And then we will play Molten Monstrosity. Beast Caller gets another counter. If they have more creatures, they can pump the Griffin pretty high, or if they have that uh, Captain's Call that our opponent used last game on us. Uh, they can do a lot, they can gain a bunch of life off the Elias and deal a bunch of damage to us at the same time, which puts us in a really rough spot. We are pressuring their life total, but if they put up a whole bunch of blockers, our menace uh, stops mattering, and like right now they can double block with the 4-4. Four -four. Ooh, they're drawing cards and losing two life. Depends on what they hit, though. You know, opponent drawing cards, always bad. Opponent losing life to do it, at least a little bit better. You know, like, we all know when we've been playing Magic long enough that trading life for other resources is never the worst thing, especially when those resources allow us to win the game way more than having extra life would. But it is still a cost, and it is still something that we might be able to exploit with the cards that we have to work with. <clears throat> so that's kind of what I'm hoping for right now, is that we get to exploit the extra life lost uh, to kill them when we wouldn't be able to. Of course, they do have two fresh cards now out of the top three best cards of their deck, so there is a very real chance that they more than make up for the two life lost yeah, Bone Splinters sacrifice their 2-1 now. That kills our guy. I don't like the all the eggs in one basket. Oh, that's true. We have multiple counters. How much is his value for? It was two counters, right? Um, any number of target creatures you control... So, we had two counters on him. Is making either of these things bigger? Not really. Yeah, I think we're just going to... Oh, yeah, we're going to submit one here for the Beast Caller and just put both counters on him. And hope that they don't kill the Hellion now, which they are. They have Destroy Evil. Now they jam with everything, because we don't have good blocks, so that's four, five, six, seven, eight. So what are we going to do next turn? Um, so we need three mana for that, so one, two, three, so that leaves us three red. So we get to deal two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we have to attack with this guy also, and we're still going to come up with point of damage short. We need to top deck of red source, basically, for this to work. Alright, <clears throat> we need a top deck of red source. That is not a red source. It is, ah, uh, it's another spell we can cast, but then we lose out on two of the damage. So, alright, attack with everybody. Alright, so, does give Trample, though, so we're going to give this thing Trample, we might still have it. So we go green, green, red, um, cast with Kicker, target that, and activate, activate, yeah, I'm not doing the math, I'm just jamming with everything we've got, and we see if that kills our opponent. Yep, we came up exactly one damage short. <sighs> yep, good game, opponent. I, 
ah, they would have had us dead anyway. I was thinking, like, the one thing we could have done differently then is casting Molten Monstrosity instead of pumping the last time, uh, and hoping that they couldn't get a creature down, because um, then the Molten Monstrosity gets to block. But I think we were at three anyway. Does the Elias count itself? I think it's other creatures, so we would have taken the two damage in the air, gone to one. So yeah, any creature that they cast would have killed us. Um, but yeah, that was about it. So we were one damage short there. We needed to top deck a red source instead of the green spell that we got. Because that cost us three mana and only gets us two extra damage on the other guy, so we lose the three damage off pumping our guy to add two damage to the other thing, so yeah. <clears throat> oh well. We managed to get four wins, so that's, you know, like the bottom end of what I consider good enough, so we'll go over here, we'll crack our packs real quick, and it looks like we got an extra one from the, um, you know, the battle pass thing. Ah, Timeless Lotus. Definitely a card I like having more in paper than on this. Like, I don't see myself using Timeless Lotus for anything. But I do like to build a lot of Commander decks, and 5-Color Commander can probably make use of that thing. I'm debating whether or not it's going to go into my 5-Color Super Friends deck or not. We got the Soldier Lord, and for our extra pack, we get the Elf Lord. Okay. Well, that's going to do it for this draft. I'm going to end the stream here to break it up, and then I'll probably come back and do another one. So, see you in a little bit.